everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Helen and today I thought I would go through the unread books that are on my Kindle. I've got about 30 on there. I don't read on my Kindle very often. I bought it years ago and I just never really reach for it to be fair. Um, I'd much rather have a physical book. If you've noticed when I do my uh, Scrabble TBR game I always end up picking physical books. I think I'm going to have to have a month where I just try and pick books off this list. Um, so I will go through them. I've got my, I've got my tablet. Needs a bit of a wash. Let's go back. I've got my tablet. Um, and I don't know much about any of these books, so I will have to I read a little bit about what's on them. But I will go through them. And if anybody has read any of these, let me know, and I'll put the ones that people have read up near the top if they think they're any good, because I really need to get through these. And some of them have been 99p deals on um, Amazon on the Kindle offers. Uh, some have been ones that I've picked for Eurovision-a-thon, um, the Eurovision-themed readathon that I did back in April and May, and I'm going to do next April and May. Uh, some have been... Or oh, ones that I've picked up for the... Um, you've heard me mention it before my tbr.co um give me recommend it three recommendations every few months and some of them are those that i haven't got around to reading um yeah so i'll go through them and uh yeah say what they're about and you can let me know if you think i should pull any of them to the pop the top of the pile so the first one is perfectly impossible by elizabeth top I think this is one of the ones, and there's a few of them on here, where um, because I've got Amazon Prime, they let you have a free one every month, um, and they give you an option of about five or six. Um, so this was one of those. I just like the cover. I tend to go off the cover. Um, so this one says, and his job is simple, prevent the unexpected from happening, do everything better than perfectly. An artist at heart, Anna works a day job as a private assistant for Bambi von Bismarck, a mega rich Upper East Side matriarch who's about to be honoured at the illustrious Opera Ball. Caught between the staid world of great wealth and her unconventional life as an artist, Anna struggles with her true calling. Is she supposed to be a painter? Why is she so much more successful as a personal assistant? When her boyfriend lands a fancy new job, it throws their future as a couple into doubt and intensifies Anna's identity crisis. All she has to do is ensure everything runs smoothly and hold herself together until the opera ball is over. How hard could that be? So there's that one. There's nothing that pulls me into that one. It's just out of the ones they offered, that was the one uh, that it suggested. Um, so there's that one. The next one is one I am actually really excited about. Like I say, my tbr.co suggested this one for me. It's one I've heard a lot about on YouTube recently. So I might, this probably will be one that I'll push to the top. It's basically, did I just say what this was? The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Um, so the big bigness of Venus twin sisters will always be identical, but after growing up together in a small southern black community and running away at age 16, it's not just the shape of their daily lives that is different as adults, it's everything. Their families, their communities, their racial identities. Ten years later, one, one sister lives with her black daughter in the same southern town she once tried to escape. The other secretly passes for white, and a white husband knows nothing of her past. They'll even separate it by many miles, and just as many lies, the fates of the twins remain, remain intertwined. What will happen to the next generation when their own daughter's storyline intersect really want to push that one to the top so if you can hear uh, raindrops it's on the top of my conservatory so I, that, and I love the cover of that one and this is what I find so hard when when I see these lovely covers and then I know I've got them on my kindle it's really tempting to just go and get them out of the library but I've got it there and um, it didn't cost me much at all I think that's one of the ones I got for 99p in a kindle deal so definitely need to get onto that one the next one is Room Made by Soraya Wilson. This was another one that was in the Amazon Prime office. It's meant to be a charming romance about living your life one dream at a time. It says Madison Huntington is determined to live her dreams. That means getting out from under her family's wealth and influence by saying no to the family business, her allowance and her home. But on a teacher's salary, the real world comes as a rude awakening, especially when she wakes up every morning on a colleague's couch. To get a place of her own without cockroaches, mould or crime scene tape, Madison accepts a position as a roommate. In exchange for free room and board, all she needs to do is keep her busy roommate's penthouse clean and his dog company. So what if she's never washed a dish in her life? She can figure this out right. So that does sound really good. The cover is really lovely, bright colours, but pastel. Um, so yeah, 
I want to push that one up to the top. The next one is another one that my TBR.co recommended to me. It's called Z, a novel of Zelda Fitzgerald. This is the story of the wife or partner of Scott F. Scott Fitzgerald who wrote... Oh, why they had a mental blank. The Great Gatsby. So it's telling his wife's point of view. So I won't read the description, that's the basic summary. Um, so that's one that I wanted to push up to the top. But I haven't read The Great Gatsby yet, so I'm wondering if I should read The Great Gatsby, Gatsby first and then read that afterwards. So if you've read The Great Gatsby, let me know. If you've read this one, let me know on which way around you think I should do it. Uh, the next one that lets me do it is The Woman in the Moonlight by Patricia Morris Rowe. It says, a stirring and romantic historical novel about 19th century Vienna and the tragedy and dynamic passion that inspired Ludwig, Ludwig van Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. So that was, um, the, I think that was the only historical fiction on the list at the time. So I went for that one. That was another Amazon Prime offer. Uh, or freebie. Uh, next one that's definitely getting pushed up to the top is The Strange World Travel Agency by L.D. Lipinski. This is a middle grade. Pretty sure I've heard Gav from How to Train Your Gavin talk about this one as well. At The Strange World Travel Agency, each suitcase transports you to a different world. All you have to do is step inside. When 12-year-old Flick Hudson accidentally ends up in The Strange World Travel Agency, she uncovers a fantastic secret. There are hundreds of other worlds just steps away from ours. All you have to do to visit them is jump into the right suitcase. Then Flick gets the invitation of a lifetime, join Strange World's Magical Travel Society and explore other worlds. That's going up near the top. The next one is only mostly devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. I won this on Twitter. There was a girl who ran a competition and then said she would send it to whoever won by Kindle. I was lucky enough to win. All I know about it is that it's a Greece retelling. Um, so I'm really excited about that one. So I, I might be wrong, but I think it's a male male romance. Yeah, Ollie and Will. So um, yeah, really fancy in that one. The next one is Across the Winding River, which was another one that I picked from the Amazon Prime freebies. It says, a woman unlocks the mystery of her father's wartime past in a moving novel about secret sacrifice and the power of love by the best-selling author of Daughters of the Night Sky. So, yeah, a mystery, wartime mystery. Not something I'd normally reach for, but it's something that I need to get around to reading because I want to branch out. And the next one, Stealing the Crown by T.P. Fielding. This was another Amazon Prime freebie. Uh, Britain is at war, but the greatest threat to the crown might be within the palace walls. London, 1941. Major Edgar Brampton is found shot dead in his office in Buckingham Palace. All signs point towards a self-inflicted tragedy, but when palace authorities hurry his body away and order staff to stay silent, fell in fellow courtier Guy Harford's suspicions are ra 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 raised. While the outside world faces the onslaught of war within the palace walls, a curious mystery unfolds. Rumours swirl about Brampton's relationship with the Queen and there's talk of other plots involving those closest to the King. To get to the bottom of what really happened, Guy joins forces with some unlikely allies. Rodger Carr, a beautiful East End burglar, and Rupert Hardacre, a postman with a past. But time may be running out for him, for the King and for Britain. Someone has their eye on the crown and they'll do anything to get it. So it's about solving this murder. So that's one that I might push to the top because after reading um, things like Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson recently and... The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. It's got me in that mood for that kind of murder mystery type uh, book. So there's that one. The next one's The Boyfriend Project by Farrah Rochson, another one with a, an illustrated cover, which I really liked. Uh, three friends, one packed in a temptation to break the rules. Some 
Samia Brooks never thought she would be that girl, but a live tweet of a horrific date reveals the painful truth she's been catfished by a three-time in jerk of a boyfriend. Suddenly, Samia, along with two other girlfriends, London and Taylor, have gone viral. Now the three new besties are making a six-month pack. No men, no dating, just time to focus on them. This means Samia can finally focus on her exciting career in app development, so having the deliciously sexy and distracting Daniel Collins walk into her office definitely isn't part of the plan. But is Daniel really boyfriend material, or is he simply too good to be true? So, yeah, really fancying that one. Mallory Towers collection by Enid Blayton. Basically, it's Daryl Rivers in a boarding school, and it's got the first three books, so first term, second term, first term, second form, third year. So I remember liking these when I was younger, I wanted to give them another go. I got them in a 99p deal for all three books. So yeah, not much to say about those other than I really want that nostalgia feel. Uh, the next one is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. I read a description of this on... I don't know whose channel it was. If I figure out who it was, I'll put a little star at the bottom and link the channel. Um, but it sounded so good. Um, it says, on a summer's day, 90, 1596, a young girl in Stratford upon Avon takes to her bed with a fever. Her twin brother, Hamnet, searches everywhere for help. Why is nobody at home? Their mother, Agnes, is over a mile away in the garden where she grows medicinal herbs. The father is working in London. Neither parent knows that one of the children will not survive the week. Um, so it's about it's a story about Shakespeare's son. Um, he really did have a son and it's about that. Um, but I really fancy that one. Uh, the Lending Library by Elisa Fogelson. Uh, for fans of Jane Green and Loretta Nyan, a heartwarming debut novel about a day of dreamer who gives her town and herself an amazing gift, a lending library in her sunroom, while confronting an even higher stakes life chasing decision. So it says, when the chat with library causes indefinitely. Ugh, so I definitely will want to read this. Dodie Ferrile loses her sanctuary. How is a small town art teacher supposed to cope with the never ending life advice and enjoyment that books give her? Well, when she's as resourceful and generous as Dodie, she turns her sunroom into her very own little lending library. At first, just a hobby, this lit lover's haven opens up her world in incredible ways. She knows books are powerful, and soon enough, they help her forge friendships between her zany neighbours and attract an exciting new romance. That's probably going to end up at the top. I work in a library. I was devastated when the mobile library had to stop. I recently saw somebody on Twitter um, advertising a camper van that had been turned into a mobile library and they were selling it. And I spoke to my husband and I was really tempted. But it's a bit of a pipe dream. But yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe one day. Uh, so yeah, that one. Sorry I Missed You by Susie Crouch. A poignant and heartwarming novel about friendship, ghosting and searching Francis to life mysteries. When Mackenzie, Sunna and Maud move into a converted rental house, they are strangers with only one thing in common. Important people in their lives have ghosted them. Mackenzie's sister, Sunna's best friend and Maud's fiancé are all gone with no explanation. So when a mangled, near, indecipherable letter arrives in their shared post box, hinting at long awaited answers. Each tenant assumes it's for her. The mismatched trio decide to stake out the coffee shop named in the letter. The only clue they're having in the process of our kinship forms that reminds me a bit of um, the Mamma Mia story where the three men get letters and they have to come and so that does sound actually really good so uh, yeah definitely want to give that one a go Heidi by Johanna Spirey I think I got this for nothing on the Amazon King Classics edition because of Eurovision, I thought I was looking for something for I want to say Switzerland I think this was for that um, and I picked this one out so, filled with the power of love and beauty of nature, Heidi is a lyrical tale about a little girl sent to live in the mountains of the Swiss Alps with her grandfather. A grumpy recluse, her grandfather has isolated himself from his fellow townspeople and his church. In very little time, Heidi warms his heart and she quickly charms the whole town and makes new friends, including young Peter the goat herd. But when Heidi is sent away again to care for a young girl her own age, she must grow wise beyond her years, learning invaluable lessons that she will impart to others to better their lives. So, yeah. Don't often read classics. I do enjoy them when I do, so that's one I definitely want to give a go. The Price of Paradise by Susanna Lopez Rubio. This was one that I got from one of the Amazon Prime freebies. Uh, I picked this one out for Spain for Eurovision Athon, and then I picked another another book, but I can use this for April May next year. 
In a city as corrupt as it was luxurious, those who dared to dream were bound to pay the price. Havana, Cuba, 1947. Young Patricio flees impoverished Spain and steps into the sultry island paradise of Havana with only clothes on his back and half-baked dreams of a better life. Blessed with good looks and natural charm, he lands a job as a runner at El Encanto, one of the most luxurious department stores in the world. Famous for its exquisite offerings from French horticulture to Arabian skills, El Encanto indulges the senses senses in opulent extravagance. It caters to visiting Hollywood stars, rising politicals and pre-revolutionary Cuba's wealthiest power players, including the notorious mobster Cesar Valdez. Falling in love with the mobster's young wife, Gloria, is suicide, but Patricia was irresistibly drawn to the beautiful girl with sad eyes. And it goes on and on. Too long, some of these. So, yeah, uh, might leave that for Spain for Eurovision a thorn in April, May. The next one is 13 Treasures by Michelle Harrison. I got this one in an offer for 99p off Amazon because I'd enjoyed um, a pinch of magic and a sprinkle of sorcery so much and I didn't, I couldn't wait for the next one, which is actually out on my birthday in February. So there's still a way to go, but I got this and I just haven't uh, picked it up yet. But it's um, this is also going to be a magical trilogy as well. So it's while visiting her grandmother's house, an old photograph leads Tanya to an unsolved mystery. 50 years ago, a girl vanished in the woods nearby, a girl Tanya's grandmother will not speak of. Fabian, the caretaker's son, is tormented by the girl's disappearance. His grandfather was the last person to see her alive and has lived under suspicion ever since. Together, Tanya and Fabian decide to find the truth, but Tanya has her own secret, the ability to see fairies, and after disturbing an intruder in the night, it emerges that somebody else shares their ability. The man manor's sinister history is about to repeat itself. That sounds exciting. And I've loved her other books, so definitely that's going to be at the top of the list. The next one is The Other Family by Loretta Nyan. This is another one of the Amazon Prime freebies. It says, from the best-selling author of Digging, in comes a witty and moving novel about motherhood, courage and finding true family. That will be why I've picked it. With a dissolving marriage, strained finances and her life in flux, Ali Anderson longs for normal. Her greatest concerns, though, are the health problems of her young daughter, Kylie. Symptoms point to a compromised immune system, but every doctor they have seen has a different theory. Then comes hope for some clarity. It's possible that Kylie's illness is genetic, but Ali is adopted. A DNA test opens up an entirely new path, and where it leads is a surprise to an aunt Ali never knew existed. She's a little wild, very welcoming, and ready to share more of the family history than Ali ever imagined. So yeah, family, motherhood, sounds really interesting. 29 Gifts by Cami Walker. This I ordered years ago. I'm pretty sure it is non-fiction. So it says, at age 35, Cami Walker was burdened by an intensified struggle with multiple sclerosis, a chronic neurological disease that left her debilitated and depressed. Then she received... Oh, and it, it's gone a bit weird on Amazon here, but um, oh, an uncommon prescription from South African healer Mabali Kriazo give away 29 gifts in 29 days. It's the insightful story of the author, like, author's life change as she embraces and reflects on the natural reciprocal process of giving. Many of Walker's gifts were simple phone calls for change, a Kleenex, yet the acts were transformative. By tw day 29, not only had Walker's health and happiness improved, but she created a worldwide giving movement. 29 gifts shows how a simple daily practice of altruism can dramatically alter your outlook on the world. I used to work in, well, in health and well-being. We used to focus on the five ways to well-being. Um, it was connect, be active, take notice, Something like learn something new and get outside. I can't remember the five of them. I used to have them um, trained on my brain, but one of, one of them was give. And so it was encouraging people to give of themselves, not necessarily in monetary um, ways, but like it says, um, a phone call or if somebody needs a tissue or maybe not in this day and age at the minute, touching tissues, but you get the drift. So this is something that I really, especially it's nonfiction, it really happened. I love to give gifts. I love giving more than receiving at Christmas and birthdays. I'm more excited to see the other person open the gift from me. So I really want to read this. So that's definitely going to be up there. Uh, the next one, Not Quite Dating by Catherine Bybee. It says, and I can't remember 
because the, I'm getting to the ones that have been on there a long time now, so I can't remember if I just got this in a 99p deal or I don't know. It says, um, waitress and single mum, Jessica Mann, is practical to a fault. Even if she had time to date, which she doesn't, she'd be determined to provide her son with a more secure upbringing than one she had. And that would mean a husband with big bucks. When Jack Morrison, a sexiest sin, seemingly broke custom with a cowboy hat and a seductive grin, tries to flirt with her, she shoots him down. She doubts a carefree dream like Jack can provide the financial stability she needs. Yet with Christmas just weeks away and Jesse not wanting to spend it alone, the charming Texan is proving hard to resist. So we'll see how that one goes. It's not pulling at me, but it sounds okay. The next one is The State We're In by Adele Parks. It says, Joe is a hopeless romantic, worried she let her soulmate slip away. She's chasing her past all the way to Chicago to break up her ex fiance's wedding. Dean is a res resolute cynic after a brief but not brief enough trip to London who's turned into Chicago where he moved to escape his dysfunctional past. In the time it takes to fly from London to Chicago, each finds something in the other that they didn't even realise they needed. But it's only when they get off the plane that the true journey begins. So that sounds like it's full of drama. Uh, I Heart Paris by Lindsay Kelk. There's a full series, I Heart Hollywood, I Heart... Hawaii is one of them. I've read the first one, but I can't remember what it was. Is it I Heart London? No, I Heart New York. And then there's another one after this, and then I think another one after that, and then I think this is like the third one or something like that. So there's another one I need before I need to read this one. But Steph from Steph Loves is like obsessed and loves Lindsay Kelk. So I do want to do that series. So that's one I can't read yet till I've read the, the next one. But I definitely want to get around to that. The next one is The Unmumsy Mums by Sarah Turner. I read the Umnumsy Mum book, um, but this is where she's collected stories from other people, yeah, anecdotes from other mums who've had similar experiences. So that's one that I'm definitely intrigued to read because I did enjoy reading that one. The Nothing Girl by Jodie Taylor. I This was in a, a deal because I'd read the first one in the Chronicles of St Mary's series because my friend Nicola had mentioned it to me and I enjoyed it but because it's been that long since I've read the first one before I carry on with that series I'm gonna to have to go back and read the first the first of that series but this was one I, I downloaded at the time because it was by the same author uh, so it says getting a life isn't always easy and hanging on to it is even harder known as the nothing girl because of her severe stutter and chronically low self-confidence Jenny Dove is only just prevented from ending it all by the sudden appearance of Thomas a mystical golden horse only she can see under his guidance Jenny unexpectedly acquires a husband the charming and chaotic Rus Russell Checkland and her nothing will ever be the same again with overprotective relatives on one hand and the world's most erratic spouse on the other Jenny needs to become someone and fast intriguing if you can only see a horse so and nobody else can see it um the next one is or oh, the next two are by cecilia Hearn. i read a couple of hers really was into them and then i just think they got overhyped and it just put me off reading them but i've got two so one is a hundred name a hundred names is that just what it's called the 100 names and the book of tomorrow so the first one is kitty logan has lost her way as a journalist she spent the past few years chasing the big scoops no matter the consequences when she makes a terrible mistake she finds herself mired in scandal her career implodes and even her personal relationships are tested to the limits at last kitty finds distraction in a list of a hundred names her list mentor and boss constant has left her kitty's been given one final chance the most important assignment of her life to write the story behind the 100 names as a tribute piece to constance as she tracks down the people on the list and tries to work out what connects them kitty meets some extraordinary people can these strangers story help her finally understand her own and then so that was 100 names and this one's the book of tomorrow uh, it says, lose yourself in the magical and mesmerising story from Cecilia Hearn of how tomorrow can change what happens today. Sometimes tomorrow has to start today. Tamara Goodwin has always lived in the here and now, never giving a second thought to tomorrow until a travelling library arrives in a tiny village, bringing with it a mysterious large leather bound book locked with a gold clasp and padlock. What she discovers within the pages takes her breath away and shakes her work to its core. Another library one that's going to be up there. So they're looking through them now. I'd say 75% are ones that I'm thinking there's no reason why I shouldn't read them because they do sound interesting to me. And then there's the odd few. I'm like, oh, so those ones are definitely going to be left to the end. The ones that feel like I'm not really bothered about. 
So if you have read any of those books and you loved them, let me know because that will make me want to read them first. Um, if there's any you really didn't like, tell me that as well because um, I would rather put them on for a bit longer. But hold me accountable. I've got all them books there. I don't need to be buying new ones. Waterstones has got their uh, double double stamps thing out today. You know, I, I put about £30 worth of books in my car and then thought, no, you don't need to. And I'm dead proud of it. And if I haven't done it by the end of tomorrow, then I've missed out on that offer. And I will be proud of myself because I don't need to order any more. I've got all these ones on here. As you've seen, I've got at least 30 there on my Kindle. So that's what I need to be doing. So thank you for your time. And if you have enjoyed my channel so far, please consider liking and subscribing. And I will see you next time. Bye.